Virginia society began to erode, and as a result, black and white servants were treated differently under the law. By the early 1640s, blacks in servitude began being considered servants for life. 1660. Wrong way, there we are. The little arrows again pointing at settlements at which we know for certain Africans were living in 1625, and that's based on that mustard. Now, I hope I haven't been too long-winded, but I want to just speed through right quickly where what we know about some of the Africans who who were here. We know that in in 1625, an African couple was living in Captain William Tucker's house, sold in Kikatan. And then in 1624, they were there, and that they were on the west side of the Hampton River. By 1625, their son William had been born and baptized. He is the earliest identifiable child of African descent born in Virginia. And William Tucker, as I mentioned before, had been here since 1610 and was the brother of Bermuda Governor Daniel Tucker, and almost certainly was been, been aware of African workers' value especially as tobacco growers. And since, after all, to reiterate, Daniel Tucker had had the first African brought in to Bermuda in 1616. And Tucker was here when Governor, when Lord Delaware arrived and he had a lot of continuity. Now William Tucker was supposed to board all incoming and departing ships. So he may well have welcomed the White Lion in late August 1619 and greeted the treasurer shortly thereafter. We really don't know. And I think it's always important to admit when we don't know something and step back and maybe hey, somebody hands. else will eventually find something meaningful Set or not. Hand. We often have to accept what we can't change and issues like that. When Captain William Tucker made his will in October 1642, he made no mention whatsoever of the African couple and their little son who had been part of his household. And if they were still alive, they may have left his plantation. We really don't know. A 30-year-old man named John Pedro, who had come to the colony on the Swan in 1623 and was 30 in 1625, was living in Kicktown on the east side of the Hampton River on what had been Virginia Company land. Former Governor George Yardley died in 1627 while he was living in Jamestown. And when he made his will, he asked his wife to see that his white servants and his black ones were sold separately along with his goods and property. So we know that those people were dispersed. However, I throw this out, Abraham Piercy, a flower to hundred, witnessed Sir George Yardley's will. And he went on to purchase flower to hundred from Sir George Yardley. Um, in September 1625, Lady Tempest Yardley was given temporary custody of an African man who had come to the colony on the ship Portugal. She was ordered to pay him 40 pounds of tobacco per month for his labor as long as he was part of her household. So clearly he was not asleep. By February 1628, Lady Temperance had begun selling her late husband's estate. And she married real quickly. And so if the Yardley's <coughs> Africans hadn't been sold, they may have descended to their children. If so, they may have moved to Virginia's eastern shore with eldest son Arvel Yardley, or gone to the Lynn Haven area with youngest son Francis Yardley. In October 1625, <coughs> the general court gave, excuse me, 